After working as a code monkey for around two years and still not yet promoted, I wonder why. I have learned a lot about what not to do just from observing what I do on a daily basis. So here are some tips that will help you succeed or fail, up to you. Number one, ask questions when you're stuck. When you get stuck on a problem, you might be scared to ask questions and it's most likely because you just don't have much experience. Some thoughts that might race through your head. What if they think I'm stupid? What if they think I'm useless? Will they fire me? Well, I'm still working, so I think you'll be good. It really depends on the work environment, but junior engineers really shouldn't have much expectation. You're mostly just there to learn, especially since you're just starting out. So let's just assume that we're talking about a good work environment, kind of like like my work environment and i'm not just saying that because i'm still working i know it's, a, it's actually a pretty good work environment you might compare yourself to a senior engineer where you think that they're this all-knowing being and they know the answer to every single question but mm. that's actually not the case senior engineers just know what type of questions to ask and when to ask them that just comes with experience they also usually don't have to ask programming questions contrary to junior engineers where they usually have to ask programming questions and just learn how to write code now that you know that you should ask questions your question might be, how do I ask questions? I'm glad you asked. Every time that you get stuck on a problem, you shouldn't immediately go and ask a question. What I like to do is do some research and try to figure out the problem first. And if I can't figure it out after a certain amount of time, then I'll have to ask that question. A pretty simple template that I use is I'm working on X and I've tried Y. Can I get some help? Help me, help me. This shows that you're at least trying to learn, which is pretty much all they can ask for as a junior developer. One of the worst things that you can do at your job is to make no progress on a task because you're not sure what you're supposed to do. It might not even be your fault when something's not working. Someone else could have broken the development environment. And it's very unlikely that you'll be able to fix that without asking for help. I was actually really scared of asking questions when I first started because I was scared of asking about something that I should have already known. All of my teammates have a lot more experience to me, so I thought they would think I was dumb for asking these questions. But something that I realized, even if you ask that dumb question, no one really pays that much attention. They'll probably just forget the next day. Like your teammates just want to help you get unblocked. There's really nothing you lose by asking questions. But one thing you want to pay attention to is to not ask the same question over and over again. So I usually like to take notes on important questions so I don't have to ask them again in the future. Number two, make mistakes and receive feedback. It's expected that you'll make many, many mistakes. Some Sometimes you might even think it was a mistake for them to hire you. I think that every day. When I first started at my current job, I did not know how to write clean code or even write unit tests. I guess that's what happens when the job interview is mostly leak code and I did way too many leak code. I pump problems. those numbers up, those are rookie numbers. The job interview process is broken, but that's for another video. So back to what I was talking about. What was I talking about? So when I first started, I received so many comments on my pull requests. The important thing is to take this feedback and try to improve and don't take the comments personally. Even if they literally say, your teammates are just trying to help you. Some of the common mistakes that I did was that I put pull requests up for review before I even reviewed it myself. So my teammates got to see all of the unpolished, horrible code that I've written, although it works like 50% of the time. And so I realized I needed to take my time and focus more on the quality rather than the quantity because I felt like I just wanted to finish pull requests as fast as possible so I can move on to the next one. But it doesn't matter how fast you finish your pull request if it just gets a bunch of comments and gets sent back to you anyway. It's raw. I've also made some mistakes where bugs made it to prod. That's just what being a software engineer is. We just push bugs to prod. At this point, you might think like a bug made it to prod. What if they fired me for this? It's not entirely your fault. People approved your PR and QA didn't catch the bug. So you shouldn't worry too much about getting fired over something like this. All you can do is just worry about the things that you can control. Just be more careful next time and hopefully catch it earlier. Don't worry too much about making mistakes. Just try to learn from them and keep improving. Number three, soft skills and communication. So this is a given, but since you spend most of your time with your coworkers, you should create a good relationship with them. It's not a competition to one up each other or take other people's work as your own. That just sounds like an awful work environment. Teammates should support each other whenever they need it. Something I like to do is whenever I ask for help, I like to give credit to my teammates in stand-up. And this shows your manager that your teammates spend time helping you and also that you've asked a question to get unblocked. And when you give credit to your teammates, they'll be pretty grateful and more more likely to help you in the future. Creating these relationships are pretty important for peer reviews where you need to go up for promotion. You want your teammates to write good things about you. It's also good for networking. Maybe when you're looking for a new job in the future and they're working somewhere else,
else, they might be able to refer you. Honestly, it's just don't be an asshole. But it might be a little bit difficult because as junior engineers, a lot of us probably struggle with social anxiety and don't really know how to talk to people. And I'm not just talking about myself. When I started working, I noticed how important soft skills are. People think all we do is just code and we never communicate with each other. That is not the case. There is so much talking and there are so many meetings. A lot of days I have no energy just from talking and being around so many people. Soft skills, super important. Building relationships, super important. These are pretty much things that you'll use at any job. Just be nice to people. Number four. Don't be too hard on yourself. Software engineering is difficult and it's definitely more difficult as a junior engineer because there's so many things that you have to learn. But that's the reason why we get paid so much more than other professions. We're not just eating food all day. There's some times where you'll be working on some complex tasks and you might think that you can't do it. I'm only saying this because I felt this way. The way I like to look at it now is that I deserve the job because I passed that ridiculous interview process regardless of what I do on the job. What a lot of people don't realize is that interviewing is really costly for a company. If they spend their resources on hiring a junior engineer, then it's very unlikely that you'll be fired. Junior engineers are seen as a long investment, but I guess also it really depends on the company. A lot of companies probably just do want junior engineers for cheap labor and they don't try to grow them properly. At least in America, it's pretty difficult to get fired for performance issues. You would first need to be put on the performance improvement plan, also known as paid interview prep. But basically when you're put on this performance improvement plan, they're likely going to fire you after a few months. At that time, you have to be searching for new jobs. But ultimately, these things are out of your control because if a company wants to fire a junior engineer for not doing well enough, they're probably just not a good company to work for anyway. Just do your best and focus on the things that you can control because this is going to be a long journey and we're probably going to be working until we die. When I stopped thinking about these kinds of things, I realized how much more happy I was because I stopped setting these unrealistic expectations on myself. I'm actually getting good reviews in performance reviews, but I was still upset about my progress because I felt like I was comparing myself to my teammates. Oh well, all I can do is just work on myself. Those are the tips that I have for this video. I have more tips, but thanks for watching. Bye bye.